Hey guys, uh, just do a quick update video regarding the uh, Shinko tires that I installed. Um, back when I first got this bike, um, just wanted to kind of illustrate kind of the wear and what I think of them. Um, in terms of, uh, I don't know, I mean, economy definitely and uh, performance, sort of, and what I think about them overall. So, I guess let's start with, with the good. The good is that they're inexpensive. Um, meaning that if you need some tires and you're not planning on knee dragging or anything like that, you're commuting essentially, um, I, I would definitely recommend these tires. Um, mainly because they get you down the road um, and they're, they're, they're bike tires. I mean, they're not, they're not high performance tires like Michelin's or Pirelli's or Dunlop's or anything like that but they, they are actually good tires. Uh, I'm not gonna diss on them. Uh, people do. Uh, matter of fact, when I went to the Dragon, people were like, oh my gosh, you're on Shinko's, oh, you're brave. I'm like, um, it's fine. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can see, I got a little bit of a chicken strip there. Um, I don't need drag. I don't have the gear to do that. And, and I, I don't know how to do it. I mean, I guess I, if I tried, I could, but you know, I, I I guess I do spirited riding. Um, some people might call it, what is it, power touring? I don't know if I even do that. I do like to have fun on this bike and um, it handles corners very differently than a lot of other bikes that you would be knee dragging on. Um, and other folks who own the XB can probably attest to the fact that it takes very, very little effort to put this bike into a corner and to make very sharp turns with it um, without feeling the need to, to get really, really low. It just does it. Again, I guess if you really push in this bike, yeah, I guess you would be maybe dragging a knee. I just don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if this is real. I don't want to say that. I was going to say, I don't know if this is really the bike for that. I, I don't want to say that because other XB owners would be like, no, dude, for real. Um, so in general, if you just need a general purpose tire, yeah, I mean, get them. They, I think the set was like, I don't know, like 150, something like that. Um, I'll put a link down below. Um, I got them from Amazon. Um, I, I don't recommend getting everything from Amazon, I, although I think a lot of us do just because of the uh, convenience of doing it. Um, but you know, companies like Revzilla and and uh, Chaparral and, and all those bike companies, um, definitely give them your business. Local shops, give them your business too. Um, I had these mounted and balanced at a local shop here who actually had these tires in stock. I could have gotten them from them. I don't know if I would have paid more or not, but I'll definitely remember that. Um, I haven't been able to verify this. Maybe one of you guys can comment down below, but um, supposedly Shinko's are Yokohama's. So I'm saying that on the internet and if I'm wrong, this video will remain perpetually on the internet. You guys can just keep commenting down below and telling me how stupid I am for thinking these are Yokohamas. So anyways, aside from that, let's talk about the bad. Um, they're not real grippy. They're not bad. I don't want to say you're just sliding all over the road, but you don't feel the level of confidence you would like. I had Michelin... Um, Pilot 3s on here previously and um, those are good tires like the dual compound tires those are absolutely excellent tires and anybody who's had Michelin's can say yeah you know unless you're just a Michelin hater 
And other, other Buell owners I know on the forum will typically run Pirelli's or um, um, the Michelin's um, Pilot 3's or the, uh, I think Pilot 5's are out now and people like those too. The reason I didn't buy those again was I keep mentioning in almost every single video of mine that the roads here freaking suck. I'm, I mean, there's no getting around it. They're rough. Um, I just got a, uh, I'm gonna get a harness for my phone. I don't have a GoPro, but I've found a harness. Never thought of looking for one, but I found a harness that'll hold my phone. And I'm gonna take you guys for a ride. And um, hopefully the harness works out. <laughs> I hope my phone does not fall out. Oh, that will suck royally. But anyways, um, I'll take you guys for a ride and um, show you. I'll show you that the best road I have near me would be considered kind of craptastic back where I used to live in Tennessee. Um, so I'll take you for a ride so you can kind of see exactly what I mean by crappy roads. Um, so anyways, back to the tires, I guess the cons. Um, they are, like I said, not very grippy. When I was at the Dragon, it started raining. And um, let me tell you, I did not have one bit of confidence. Uh, I felt the bike moving around on me quite a bit. My brother who had Bridgestones felt fine. Of course, he had traction control on his bike. He said it did kick in a couple times. I don't have traction control. Um, so straight line in the rain, Heavy rain, I got caught in some really, really heavy rain on the way back from the Dragon uh, in Eastern Tennessee. And um, these did fine, going straight, no problem at all. Um, so like I said, commuting, great. But when I got into the hill country again, and uh, like Fall Creek Falls area, which by the way, is actually a really good ride if you're in the Middle Tennessee, Eastern part of Middle Tennessee, kind of Cookville, or as we would say in Tennessee, Cookville, uh, the Cookville area, Crossville area, uh, you, that's a good ride. You did, that's a definitely a good ride. Um, you'll have fun there, but it's not fun in the rain <laughs> uh, with these tires. I, I really, I, I, I was riding like an old man, uh, and I am an old man, but I was riding seriously like an old man. Um, did not feel confident at all. A lot of pucker factor, if you know what I mean. So, not so great in the rain okay on dry but where uh, these tires so all right so let's be fair that is newer than that not because the old one wore out but because just like days before going to the dragon I got a nail in the back tire and didn't want to risk it um, with uh, a plug although it's sitting right here it's actually right in the corner and I am not afraid to use that thing again. I just didn't want to go to the Dragon and risk having a plug come out and uh, having a really bad day. Um, I could have, and I know that I could have, but you know, you just, you go, I was going that far, riding on the road, I did not want to risk it. So uh, I bought a new rear tire and uh, got it broken in just previous to riding out. And um, it did fine. Uh, they did fine, and I'll, I want to keep saying, you know, complimenting the tires in that regard. They got there. They're continuing to get me down the road. I'm continuing to have fun on the bike, and um, so that's just the two, the two things that I'll say that are not great. It's it's wet grip in the turns, and overall grippiness or confidence uh, under spirited riding. They do okay, but you still feel like, hmm, I'm not so sure how hard I can take this corner. Um, pretty sure if I had Michelin's or Dunlop's, or, I'd be like, oh yeah, I got this. Um, you don't really feel that way with these. You just, I don't know, there's not a lot of feedback. That's, that's probably the best way to put it. There's not a ton of feedback coming back up through the bike from these tires. And I think it's because of the carcass. Um, they're just, they're thick, they're stiffer tires. So, 
anyhow. So that's that's kind of it on the Shinkos. Again, I'll, I'll put a link down below if you're interested in getting some. You may not be now that you've heard me say all this. I know Shinko does make some sportier tires. Um, and maybe some of y'all have used them before and had good success with them um, under harder riding conditions. Um, but I think that uh, next time, I don't know. See, okay, so here, let me kind of spell out where I'm at. I'm going to just kind of mind dump on you guys. I just thought I would kind of mind dump on, on the uh, tire situation and kind of what I'm thinking. So again, um, I keep mentioning how bad the, the roads are here in my area of North Texas. And, and um, the, I mean, like I said, they, they're bad. Um, it looks, okay, let me describe it. Previous to me taking you on this, this magical mystery tour ride that I'm talking about once I get my chest harness and we get, we get out there on the road. But I want you to imagine cobblestone covered in tar with a little oil, just a little bit of oil on the top of that. That's what it's like in many of the corners. I'm not kidding you, it's legit. And anyone who sees this video, who rides in North Texas can verify that a lot of the turns here because of the, the type of pavement that they use, um, it tends to model. I don't know how, I don't know how, it, I don't know how to describe it. You'll see, um, but it's uh, it, it's not, it's not fun. Uh, it seems as though in some areas they're starting to use like what you would typically see with blacktop, you know, real asphalt and um, nice smooth pavement. Um, some of the areas that have been fixed recently in my area have the better pavement and I'm hoping that they continue that trend because um, in a lot of cases, what they do is they just put down tar and throw gravel on top of that and some more tar on top of that and more gravel and it's just layers of, it's crap. And, and anyone who lives in rural areas um, in Texas, um, they did the same thing when I used to live in Idaho, same thing up there. Um, I forget what they call it, but it's got a name. Maybe you, some of y'all who know what I'm talking about can, can mention it down below. But, um, so back to, <laughs> I'm kind of, going full circle here guys i apologize so it's hard for me to justify the expense of a higher end tire like a michelin and that's probably the direction i would go is it, it go back to a michelin if i went back to a better tire it's hard for me to justify that with these kinds of roads um buells eat tires the torque they just they just do and, and so the expense there alone, um, as a father raising kids and got one who's going to start driving soon, I'm broke. Like that's just a fact of life. And so I'm lucky to even have this bike and be able to do what I do on it. And, um, so I'm, I'm just kind of maintaining it and keeping it going until the kids are out of the house and I can invest more money in, into this bike or, or whatever I end up doing with it. But, um, the, the road conditions are, are a big factor in the decision, uh, the initial decision for these tires and, and kind of what I'm mulling over in my head. That said, I, I would really like to have more feedback from the tires themselves as I'm riding. You know, it'd be nice to be able to feel what the bike is doing underneath me. And um, as I'm carving through the turns, feel what that's you know, get a, get a little bit more confident, confidence in, in terms of that, that, uh, that experience. So I don't know. I mean, um, I guess it wouldn't hurt to upgrade the tires whenever these wear out and go ahead and get some better tires just, just one time and, and see what it's like. Um, the Michelins that were on here previously, they were pretty nice. So I don't know. I don't know some things to think about. What would you guys do? You uh, let me know down below in your in the comment section. Let me know what you, you think about the situation. So pretty soon, um, I have another video coming out on the Buell. Uh, have maybe a really cool part. I mentioned that it's you know difficult for 
for me to just go willy-nilly on this bike. You know, you see a lot of um, build bike build videos where they just completely shred the bike down and build it all from scratch and, you know, rock and roll and you end up with this beautiful new bike. Like, oh, by the way, I'm going to put a plug in for RRC. Uh, I think it used to be called Really Random, something like that. He's uh, got this amazing channel and he does a lot of bike restorations. He, he did a uh, couple Ducatis. Oh my gosh, these things are absolutely bonkers. Beautiful bikes. He just did a three-wheeler, like one of those old Honda um, three-wheelers from the 80s and um, did, an, did an excellent job on, on that. So uh, I'll post a link to, you need to check out his channel. Um, he's, a, he's got some really good material, very high quality, better than what, what I do. Um, so definitely check him out. Um, anyway, so I mentioned that um, you know, I have to kind of take things in stages with this bike and, and purchase what I can, when I can, and do what I can on a budget. And so I'm hoping that the next video, it'll be short, but I think it'll be cool. I'm kind of stoked about it. So let's just say it involves a color change, not paint. <laughs> so... Uh, that's it guys. Um, thank you very much for checking out today's episode and, uh, until next time, peace out. Keep it between the ditches.